قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد In our previous discussion we had narrated to you a narration of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and we tried to apply this narration of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu with regards to our engagement on social media. To recap, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says in a very beautiful narration narrated by Malik ibn Dinar where Umar said, Man kathura kalamu kathura sakatu. He who talks too much, and we made mention that talking could refer to texting. Man kathura kalamu, he who talks too much, kathura sakatu is bound to make many mistakes. Waman kathura sakatu qalla hayau. And he who is bound to make mistakes, the result of that will be the shrinking of his modesty, the shrinking of his haya. وَمَنْ قَلَّ حَيَاءُهُ قَلَّ وَرَاعُهُ And he whose haya shrinks, his filter and his guard becomes less. وَمَنْ قَلَّ وَرَاعُهُ مَا تَقَلْبُهُ And he whose filter is withdrawn or diminishes or shrinks, results in the death of his heart. Now, social media and haya, there is a very strong link and connection between social media and haya. Let's talk a little about haya. A lot of our interaction on social media is governed by the measure of our haya. In fact, Haya is a yardstick of measure of our haya. A significant point to reflect is the connection between haya and social media. Now remember, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, if you lose your haya, do what you please. And the same would apply to the present day of communication on the social media. In other words, if you have lost your haya, then whatever you post, and you remember we spoke about the output on social media, we spoke about the input, we spoke about the obsession of putting out things and the obsession of being consumed by things that is put onto social media. And the yardstick of what you consume and what you put out is your level of haya. So if you lose your haya, said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then do what you please. Now this hadith would apply to the present day of communication on the social media. You may ask, what is the definition of haya? It's a saying, or rather it's a terminology that has been frequently used when we speak in public lectures on the Jummah Khutbah. And we hear this word and this term Haya very often. What is Haya? Now, various scholars and various ulama have went into length into describing Haya. And volumes of books have been written in defining haya. I would just like to mention one or two definitions from our classical scholars how they have looked at haya. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahumullah's definition of haya is that he who does not care about haram and halal is a man who has no haya. 
He who does not care about haram and halal is a man who has no haya. Someone asked Ibrahim al-Adham rahimahumullah, allow me to sin. Allow me to sin. And he said, if you want to sin, subhanallah, look at this. If you want to sin, then sin where Allah is not able to see you. Or sin in that place that does not belong to Allah. What a beautiful definition of haya. I'm linking this definition or this response of Ibrahim ibn Adham to the definition of haya. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahumullah said, He who does not care about haram and halal is a man who does not have haya. Ibrahim Adham was asked, Allow me to sin. And he said, If you want to sin, then sin where Allah is not able to see you. Or sin in that place that does not belong to Allah. Now, think for a moment. Is there a place where Allah is unable to see us? Is there a place that does not belong to Allah? And if we have the ability and the audacity and the courage and the bravery to sin on the social media platforms, are we actually saying that Allah is not able to see me? Or this platform and this forum, this virtual world of social media does not belong to Allah? Zayd ibn Thabit said, مَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَحِي مِنَ النَّاسِ لَا يَسْتَحِي مِنَ اللَّهِ Again, Haya. He said, he said this once, and the statement of his, he who does not feel ashamed from people will not be ashamed of Allah. And he said this once, when he came late for his Fajr Salah, Zayd bin Thabit, Rahimahumullah came once late for Fajr Salah. And when he came late for Fajr Salah, he covered his face. He veiled his face. He disguised his, his identification. So he covered his face and someone questioned him. Why are you covering your face? And he said this. مَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَحِي مِنَ النَّاسِ لَا يَسْتَحِي مِنَ اللَّهِ He who does not feel ashamed of people will not be feel ashamed of Allah. Act responsibly. That's the punch with the use of social media. Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram and the various chatting groups. Everything that enters your eyes affects your heart. Your heart is not attached to anything that is exposed. It is hidden behind a ribcage. Our heart is not exposed. It's hidden behind a ribcage. When something that is really important, it is protected. And Allah has created our heart in a way that it is hidden. It is protected behind flesh and a ribcage. So in this, Allah is giving us a message that we need to protect and we need to preserve that which is in it. We need to preserve that which is hidden in the flesh and behind a ribcage till we meet Allah on the day of Qiyamah. Till the day when Allah is going to open that which is in it, when it will be just you and Allah. So, when we talk of social media and we talk about haya, we need to understand that everything that we consume and everything that we put out, things that we consume with our eyes and our ears affects our heart. Things that we put out with our text and our tongue is a reflection of what's in the heart. And that is the determining factor and the yardstick, whether we are people that are blessed with haya or we are people that do not have haya within us. So if you care about haram and halal, 
then you are a man that has or a woman that has haya. And if you don't care about it, then you don't have haya. Again, Ibrahim and Adham said, when asked, allow me to sin. He said, if you have and find a place where Allah is unable to see you, then sin. And if you know of a place that does not belong to Allah, then sin. Allah is able to see us wherever we are, even in the darkest corner of our rooms. And there's no place that does not belong to Allah. Let's show our commitment of our faith and acknowledge the omnipresence and the presence and the all-seeing and the all-knowing Allah. That, oh Allah, if I am being bombarded with all these desires, then I'm going to put it down and I'm going to say, oh Allah, I love you more than all these desires that I am being tempted with. And that is the exercise of building Haya. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Up until the break, we had covered a wide variety of topics in our broad discussion of social media. And basically we had come to an end of a particular area of discussions. In the next few moments I would like to address a very different type of topic yet related to social media. And I would caption this as social media sheikhs, social media scholars. We also have the issue of people that are religious, or rather may I say they assume that they are religious. They have this very self-religious mindset, the self-righteous mindset. At least they think at least they think so or have this religious persona. And social media has also given these new internet scholars, muftis, sheikhs, this, these new found internet scholars where people posting the sharp, opinionated, directive opinions. It's unbelievable. People do this if they only know the consequences of the action. It seems that there is such an obsession of throwing these haram cannons of kufr, haram cannons of fatwas, one, and haram cannons of fatwas on one and all. These people found a new forum for the acts of showing self-piety and religiousness. Now this may be a very contentious topic but when we talk about social media and the use of social media in my humble opinion it would be unjust you know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said man kadhiba alayya muta'ammidan he reserves his place in Jahannam Anyone who makes things of religion that is not about Islam is included in this warning. Islam lasted 1,400 years before you came along. And it is in no need of people like these. Now I said this previously and I'm saying it again that this may be a contentious topic. But it would be unjust and we would do injustice to the topic of social media if we did not address this aspect of the use of this platform. Now, Islam lasted 1,400 years before you and I came along. And Islam is in no need of people that use this medium to shoot out cannons of fatwa and kufr. Allah teaches us, ask the people of dhikr. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask people of knowing, in other words, expressing your opinion about a matter as the only opinion 
that you and your three people around you represent the only opinion about Islam and declaring yourself as a religious authority, stating an opinion as a fact in especially matters where there are scholarly nuances, where are the scholarly subtle differences where there is legitimate scholarly differences of opinion. And you know, many of these differences go back to the previous scholars of our Salaf. And sometimes these differences even go back to the companions in the Sahaba. And then you get a person in the 14th, in the 21st century, that comes and gives his opinion as a fact and as the only opinion. You've just committed a religious crime. And you have to answer for this to the one to whom this religion belongs, this deen does not belong to you and I. This deen does not belong to any one group of faction or people. In the deen in the lahil Islam, and you know, these people, they contribute nothing towards bringing people to Islam. They contribute nothing towards bringing people to Allah. The only thing they do is confuse people online. They do nothing good for Islam. They do only harm. Today people say, I sat with a certain sheikh, or I sit with a certain sheikh, or I belong to a certain jamaat, and I belong to a certain group, and it gives me the license to pronounce against people. You know, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, Ajma'een, may Allah be pleased with them. They were in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They stayed with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They lived with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They participated in jihad with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But they did not behave like this. They did not behave like they never spoke without knowledge. They always said after whatever they said, Wallahu alam, that Allah knows best. Whenever they pronounced a ruling, they said, Wallahu alam, and Allah knows best. Today we find people on the social media platform, contemporary 21st century scholars and muftis. These people don't even have this word in their vocabulary. Wallahu alam does not feature in their vocabulary. Some Sahaba were so cautious that they did not even relate a hadith until they were on their deathbed out of fear that may, maybe my narrative does not, that may my narrative not cause confusion in the Ummah and I am narrating it now so that I don't fall in the category of concealing knowledge. They were so cautious that they refrained from narrating a narrative that lest it may not cause confusion in the Ummah. But they only narrated it on the deathbed, again with this fear of not concealing knowledge. Now there is, in our time, this desire to be a celebrity sheikh. Now, this is important, how to stop being a celebrity sheikh and have so many followers or fanboys and fangirls but rather build real relationships with people. There is this desire of becoming a celebrity sheikh and we need to think as scholars how to stop being a cele celebrity sheikh. And let's think about building real relationships with people. We see a random inspirational Islamic video on YouTube. A random brother or sister now feels the speaker in the said YouTube or video is the solution to all life's problems. We find the Facebook fa page of a said speaker and now we feel compelled to comment on every single one of the statuses 
for example, popular Islamic speaker Facebook update. Love it or hate it. Modern trends of communication has brought about celebrity culture. And the celebrity culture is here. And the social media is playing a major role in promoting this culture. Now, it's time to talk from the perspective of how we view and approach Islamic speakers. How we view social media. And social media has created a world where people become quickly popular. But also where approaching them is easier than ever. You may hear a talk that changes your life. Alhamdulillah. And you can now just fire off a tweet at that person to thank them. Alhamdulillah. So social media has brought about this culture of celebrity, sheikhs, muftis, and also the electronic media, TV, etc. This advice for those that are on it, that act responsibly also. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill us with sincerity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from undue fame. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability of exercising humility on these platforms that has given us an opportunity of reaching out far and wide. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري